Mr. Speaker, uh, David Schuster. Uh, David has a joint appointment in the Department of Physics here in the Mallows Institute for Science Education. He teaches undergraduate physics and graduate uh, science education <coughs> courses. David uh, changed his field of specialization from nuclear physics to physics education. He grew up in Johannesburg, South Africa, received his Bachelor of Science from the University of Wisconsin, then came to the United States, University of Wisconsin in Madison, where he did graduate work in experimental nuclear physics on a sister machine to our own tandem manager. Uh, David got his PhD uh, in uh, something called the Associated Particle Mo Mo Method of Producing Collimated Non-Energetic Neutron Beams, used it to measure neutron polarization. Uh, he worked in nuclear physics for a few years, then took a position at the University of Nepal in South Africa, where they did not have any nuclear physics facility. Um, but he became more and more interested in learning and teaching processes in physics. Uh, and so he switched fields at a time when this was not very common. Physics education is now a, a major field. Uh, but at the time that David entered it, it was uh, just hardly beginning. Uh, uh, he's particularly interested in cognition, how people think in physics, whether they're experts of our analysis. Uh, he's also interested in assessment and how assessment can be used uh, to promote learning. Along the way, he's been national moderator for the uh, provincial matriculation exams in South Africa, the chief examiner of physics for the International Baccalaureate. For those of you who are familiar. Western David is involved in three funded NSF grant projects. And, but today, he's going to speak to us about the only unfunded project he's involved in. Cognitive processes and physics problem solving. Let me just mention, David and I share, share a couple of things in common, one of which is we both been diagnosed with a hearing loss. So can I ask when you have questions, please speak up. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, and if it's a tough question, I'll pretend not to hear you. Okay, well, as you'll see from my title, I'm interested in thinking, how people think, in doing physics, solving problems, in particular here about experts. And um, this is a picture of a particular expert, called, called this expert Jack, um, who's busy telling us about his problem solving processes. Let's stay with that for a moment. Um, it's obviously a play on words. Um, I use this picture, one is because it shows some kind of brain processes going on. Uh, but secondly, because the person's talking as well. So as far as research methodology is concerned, you need some way to get at how someone is thinking. And um, communication is the best we've got. Um, obviously, this is just a model of what's going on. If you want to see what's really going on, you need some kind of an X-ray view. And that's pretty much a model. Well, OK. There's one other thing. I'm looking at this at the macro level, at the level of understanding concepts. But more recent work is looking at the brain level, how brain function actually works as you think in various ways. I'm not going there anyway, except just very briefly. So if you want to look at the neuron level, something's going on there. And if you get a good idea, then things change. Maybe everything lights up inside. And then also, what happens after somebody has had long experience in the field as far as the cognitive processes are going on? Well, for some of us, it looks more like that. <laughs> OK, well, jokes aside, um, two interesting things. Physics, major interest, thinking, putting them together in terms of physics thinking. Um, for studying cognition, it's really learning, thinking, problem solving. What goes on? And uh, we're interested in how experts think, because that's presumably the target state. 
And then the initial step about how novices think most work's been done with novices. Um, and then right at the end, okay, so what does that mean for teaching physics and problem solving if we find out how people think? Um, introduce some thanks in advance. First of all, to Fred Reif and Sue Allen. At that time at the University of California, <coughs> we had many intense discussions about all of this. They had worked in the same field. And here at WMU, Adriana Montreux, uh, who is now at the University of Virginia's College at Wise. Um, in fact, this kind of stuff in optics became her PhD dissertation. She's still working with me on that. Andy De Sessa, I've not worked with at all. I just find most of his ideas very useful. So here's the central question. Expert is in quotes. So we're interested in what processes are actually involved. And notice that the final solution is one indication, but if it's an unfamiliar problem, then what does an expert do, rather than a familiar exercise? Specifically, what reasoning models, what compiled knowledge elements in the expert's repertoire are drawn upon? How, how does the expert actually get there to that final solution? And we can look at one expert, but maybe they think differently. And then, not in this talk much, about novices. And how does it look compared to the model answer? Well, okay, these are quite difficult questions. Um, here's, a, here's a short poem. <coughs> it just invented as a little book to say, you can't ask an expert, they don't know. So at the end I want to turn it around. If we can actually get at what people do, then experts really do. And maybe we can show that novices how to do it well. So some sort of apprenticeship. <coughs> okay, problem solving is what we're focusing on. What's expertise involved? What? What is expertise there involved? And of course, this is a tough question. Starting at the end with what we teach, let's just look very quickly at final form solutions. Model answers. Here's one, or at least a representation. Um, it shows a sequence of sensible steps and some diagrams. Problem. Systematic step by forward chaining application principles. That's what our solutions look like. Call it the normative, the ideal, and that's what we go over. Sensibly. Here's our question what happened before that? And really, is it representing physics or thinking? So, very interesting. I'm interested at the moment in the relation between that solution that we present and what we want to produce it. So that's um, motivation for all of this. There have been lots of studies done, by the way, um, mostly expert novices studies, and they pick the same problem and see the differences. It's, uh, it's a problem, shall we say, because it's a problem for a novice, but it's a routine exercise for an expert. So it has limited uh, capability for elucidating expert cognition, because you get from the expert the public cognition at the end, the product. And what about the private cognition, the process? I haven't said something important. What's the problem? Um, well, that's a bone of contention. You want to get into that one. That's really something. But for the solver, at least, that's probably a good definition. 
and what 